1250. That's 10 minutes before one here in the Twin Cities on Sunday, March 6th. Happy March, by the way. Happy March, everybody. Hey, we have this little segment called Cripes, Come On, You Gotta Be Kidding Me, where we remind ourselves that there's some things in this world that don't go the way they're supposed to. Now, I've had a couple of weeks full of nothing but, but cripes and come ons and you gotta be kidding me. But, but we, we, we hold tight. We say to ourselves, we know when the world isn't the way it's supposed to be. The only way we know it's not supposed to be like that is because we desire for something different. There's a contrast. We know when things are awkward, it's because we know what it's supposed to feel like when things are right. Mm -hmm. So we remind ourselves that when the world feels broken, when the world feels uh, full of all kinds of, of frustration, we say to ourselves, it doesn't need to be that way, and we have choices to make. We can live in a world where we just holler cripes and come on, and you've got to be kidding me. We could holler that all day long. We could, we could light the cripes candle for, <laughs> for every situation that we have, but we do that only knowing that after our lungs have expelled the come on, and the you got to be kidding me and the cripes, that we breathe back in. Yes. The right on and the breath of hope. So we let it all out, only to know that something good can come back in. So when we yell at the world, when we yell at the way things are, we're just clearing our lungs. <laughs> we're just coughing it out. So we come up with a cripes and a come on, and you got to be kidding me each week. And, uh, and this week, I mean, I had some real ones, but I'm going to give you some fun ones. Okay. I came home yesterday, I looked up on my roof, and I've been terrified, like all the other people here in Minnesota, that maybe my roof is going to break open and it's going to start raining water in my house. Yeah. I'm afraid of these ice dams. Mm -hmm. I see ice dam signs on the uh, side of the street. Yeah. I see billboards for them. I see them popping up on the, on the side of my, uh, my Facebook page. Yeah. I have a friend who's in the business trying to get rid of ice dams. In fact, if you have ice dams on your house, you need to get rid of them. Cocoon, high-performance living. Mm -hmm. Sponsor of the radio program. Steve Sherber was on here a couple weeks ago. So I'm looking at my roof all the time. And you know what I saw up there the other day? What? Yesterday? A nice damn. Oh, my. Oh, ho, ho, ho. and I kicked into gear. I got the roof rake out. Yeah. I'm out there. I'm pulling them off, and uh, and I start uh, taking some salt, some of this sodium chloride, you yeah. know, the stuff that the ice melts. Sure. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to lob it up on, on, on my roof, my, maybe 12, 12 feet up, you know? So you're flinging the salt up in the air. Yeah, with my hand, and then I uh, got a shovel. So I got uh, a couple of things, you know, I'm trying to spray it out, and it keeps hitting and bouncing right off and yeah. falling down. And so I finally get sort of enough up there, I think it's going to start melting, which mm -hmm. it didn't really do. I found out this morning. But then I went over, and I, I could hear the crackling, right? You know that sound when you put the ice melt down? Yeah. You get the... Oh, so key. satisfying. It's coming to life. Yeah. You're like, we're fighting back now. Right. All right, no more Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> I'm taking you on, salt. I'm taking you on natural elements yeah so i noticed that the downspout area mm. is all frozen so yeah. i've tried to I, I have a piece of the ice melt that's in a big cloth in, in a big ball yeah no not a ball in a big clump mm -hmm. you know it's a big piece of it yeah so i'm kind of throwing that up there and i want it to land right on top of the downspout area yeah. so that it will eat its way through and sort of free up my downspout right i don't know what i'm doing but i'm, I'm thinking that's <laughs> gonna work right that's maybe 10 feet high 12 feet high right above my head yeah so i'm standing out there and i, and I lob this up and it bounces once Bounces twice, bounces three times. So I step just one step closer. Yeah. I throw it up there. The thing breaks into little pieces, and the sodium chloride goes right in my eye. Oh my word! Unbelievable. Salt right? in the eye. Salt in, my, and I don't know what's in this stuff. <laughs> so now my eye is burning like crazy, and I'm trying to wash it out. I go in the house and I'm yeah. trying to wash it out, right? <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm on the internet with one eye all blurred <laughs> right, out. Right, you know, so like, do, what do you have to do if you get this salt? poison? Come right. to find out, it's basically table salt. And oh. stuff. so it's 100% sodium chloride. Sure. I, mean, I don't think you're supposed to put it in your eye. No, I'm sure that but felt good. Regardless. Oh, it was yeah. just, it was just burning, and I thought, you know, that's what I get. <laughs> that's what I get. You so should have called in cocoon. Cripes, and you got to <laughs> So I. Uh, uh, I got uh, I got salt in my eye. Yeah, I got salt in my eye for myself. The come on, you know who the come on goes out to who? What? Everybody who runs a phone service that has a phone answering system okay. at their company, mm -hmm. where they have the phrase embedded into their hold time. Your call is very important to us. Mm. Please remain on the line. Ugh. Your call is important to us. Yeah. Why? Do you think we're fooled by that? You don't pay enough people to answer the phone. Yeah. You know, there's not enough people there to really take your call. Delta Airlines, oh, who yeah. I called today to talk to their, or called this week to talk to the group reservation department, because we're just trying to take 16 people down to Guatemala to build homes for homeless sure. people and trying to work out the details in the trip. How long was I on hold? 20 minutes. It's like, here, I want to give you thousands of dollars, but you're on hold for 20 minutes. But you know what's good? They care about my call. You know how many times in 20 minutes of on hold I heard them tell me that my call is very important to them I'm, I'm thinking what and I, I should remain on the line? Yeah. So now every time I hear that, I'm just like, oh, come on. Yeah. My call is important to you. You don't even know what my call is about. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's the, it's that kind of just general compliment. Oh, you're, you look lovely today. That's just, a, it's a lovely call. Thank you for calling. Your call is important to us. 
I don't believe them. <laughs> and, you know, so I, I looked on the internet to try to come up with the, with the sound. You know, your call is very important to us because yeah. we'd play it during this bit. You know what I find out? There's a website called voicetemplates.com that will sell you for your phone service all of those. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're just mm. People selling. Mm -hmm. You're, they're selling the line, your call is very important to us. So I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deputize all of the Doug Padgett Radio listeners to every time they hear your call is very important to us to just mumble under their breath. Come on. Come on. Come on. We know it's not true. We know you're just keeping us on hold because you're trying to keep your labor costs down. <laughs> How about this other one? I'm not even going to throw this one in there. Uh, uh, listen to all the options because our, our, our menu has changed. Yes. Everybody's changing their voice. I mean, <laughs> the default is your call is very important to us, yeah. and we've changed our menu options, so you got to listen to all of them. I don't know what they're doing. Here's the you got to be kidding me. This one goes to me. Mm -hmm. Sodium chloride, you get it for being a big ball falling in my eye. Mm -hmm. People on their phone services, you get it for telling me that my call is important to you and then leaving me on hold for 20 minutes. Yeah. Come on. Here's why I get that you've got to be kidding me. Okay, since I was a kid, I've had a problem with drooling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so I had a rash on my chin. I always, I get, there's pictures of me as a kid with a big wet spot all around my collar. Oh my all right, if my sister's listening right now, I'm sure she's saying, yeah, it's true, and she used to pick on me about it. So this but is you, getting you just weren't a baby. This is when you were oh, like 10, 11 years old. <sighs> you know, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 years old. I had a drooling problem. I had a lot of saliva. <laughs> I didn't swallow as much as I produced the saliva. All right, so I got a drooling. I got to have a bit of a drooling problem, right? Yeah. And I, I worked on it as an adult. I feel better about it. You know, okay. not, not so much when I sleep or I go into a nap jerk while I'm doing a counseling session <laughs> with someone. Sometimes still the drool starts to roll. You know, I wake up with a pillow. Oh, so anyway, I got, I've had a bit of a drooling problem. And, I, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm letting people know. I'm, I'm man enough to say I've had a bit of a drooling problem. Well, this mm. morning, <laughs> my computer was on the coffee table where I had been working on it. My phone was on the other side of the coffee table. I had stood up and I go to walk across the room. I get a text message from who? From you, fella. You. You yeah. did this to me. Uh -huh. And I walk over to grab my phone on the coffee table. And as I reach over across the coffee table, I sort of have to lean over my computer. And what happens? But a big, long <laughs> drool comes out of my mouth right onto my keyboard. Right? And then sleeps inside uh. of my... I work really hard to keep my, to, to keep my computer nice. And all of a sudden, there is a, I mean, more, you know, a, a silver dollar sized drool <laughs> puddle. So I'm picking up my computer and shaking it out oh and trying to get out of this. And I'm just saying, you've got to be kidding me. Oh. Unbelievable. Mm. Well, sometimes it's our own proclivities. <laughs> yes. Sometimes it's what we do to ourselves by just our own. We're our own undoing. Oh, jeepers. So you got to be kidding me when it's our own proclivities that get to us. And, c and come on, d d don't, don't make promises. So don't tell me things on the phone that are sort of these generic compliments that we just know aren't true. Yeah. Your calls are very important to us. And sodium chloride, salt in your eye, because sometimes we live in a world where we have to say cripes and come on and you've got to be kidding me. But let that bring out something better in us. Mm -hmm. Let us say that someday, someday we'll experience the world as it's supposed to be. Someday there'll be a right on. At the end of the second hour, we'll give you the right on, the, uh, the, the, the callback to the way yeah. that the world ought to be. Hey, hour number two, we're going to be back with Craig Goodwin, who's living off the land all by himself. We're going to talk about heaven and hell yeah. and a right on about those who decide to jump on in. Right. So stick with us here on AM 950 and DougBadgerRadio.com. <laughs> <laughs>